Hello and welcome. It seems like one of the greatest pastimes of modern American car enthusiasts is lamenting the death of the small, affordable pickup truck. If you listen to these people online, modern American pickup trucks are huge, grotesquely expensive abominations. All they really want is a cheap, compact, preferably manual pickup truck that they can use to haul stuff on the weekends while still getting decent fuel economy during the commute. Well, the new Ford Maverick seems like a pretty decent solution to this problem, but I reckon I've got an even better one, and it costs less than half as much as a Ford Maverick. Meet the Wuling Fighting in pink. Be sure to like, subscribe, and hit the bell so you can keep up with all the great content coming from the Wheels Boy channel and keep learning about the Chinese auto market. All right, back to the video. The name Wuling might sound familiar to longtime viewers of this channel because this is actually the third Wuling model we've reviewed, the other two being the Wuling Mini EV, China's best-selling electric car, and the Wuling Hongguang, China's best-selling car, period. Wuling, a result of the joint venture between SAIC and General Motors, is known for producing extremely affordable vehicles, and the fighting is no different, with prices ranging from just nine to $10,000. The front end styling of the fighting may not have the same charm as the Mini EV, but well, nothing really does. What you get instead is a simple, handsome design with almost no frills other than these optional lower fog lamps. There are no LED headlights or radar units or cameras because those are expensive and you don't need them to carry things in your truck. The fighting is about 5.1 meters in length, ever so slightly longer than a Ford Maverick. But at 2.45 meters, the fighting's bed is nearly double the length of the Mavericks. The side profile clearly reveals the MPV roots of the fighting because it looks like they just put a pickup truck bed on an MPV. The dark gray 14-inch wheels, while very small, are far more interesting than they need to be. I would have expected them to just use steelies with plastic hubcaps, but these actually look pretty cool. I also really like the look of this black roll bar, light bar, structural piece. I'm not really sure what it is, to be honest, but we're going to talk more about that in a minute. First, I want to address two issues, the color and the name. You see, we borrowed this car from a couple here in Shanghai that are what you might call social media influencers. They received this as a gift from Wu Ling and then immediately wrapped it in this pink color and used it in their wedding ceremony. You know, for the clout. Obviously, we would have preferred to review a stock car, but beggars can't be choosers. I will also take this opportunity to apologize for just how dirty it is. I swear to you, we tried so hard to clean this thing, that stuff just doesn't come off. <laughs> Wuling themselves have actually built a few concept versions of the fighting in-house. One version was specially designed for snowboarding, another one for fishing, and even one for overlanding. We saw the overlanding version at the Shanghai Auto Show, and it looked properly tough. They also made a couple of these trucks in a special color they call Meng Nanfen, which translates to fierce or vigorous man pink, and looks pretty close to the one we have here today. As for the name, well, it's not a direct translation of the Chinese name, which is Zheng Tu, which means something closer to journey or trek. It actually comes from the fact that in modern Chinese culture, the English word fighting is a commonly used term of encouragement. For example, I've been at the gym before underneath of the bench press and had a Chinese friend shout at me, fighting, as I was trying to finish one of my reps. It's the same thing as saying, you can do it. Now, fighting is a pretty good name, not as good as the Haval Big Dog or the Aura Good Cat. The only problem is it sounds really weird when you pluralize it. As in, I saw no less than three fightings on my way to work today. But let's get back to what really matters on this pickup truck, the bed. You see, this is more of a flat bed than it is a traditional pickup truck because all three sides can be folded down. In order to do that, you do have to remove this black structure here with three bolts, very easily done. 
The only problem is I'm not sure if this thing is only for holding the sides up or if it's actually part of the structure of the car. Either way, I would probably leave it on if it were my car, just in case. Still, even if you leave these sides up, you can still very, e very easily access anything in the bed because of the low ride height, the high bed, and the low sides. Now here's something you can't do in almost any modern pickup truck. They're just too big. Our tour of the interior isn't going to take very long because really there isn't much to talk about. The plastics are just as hard and cheap as you would expect on a $10,000 car, but they were nice enough to give you a variety of colors and materials, looks at least, including brushed metal and carbon fiber. There's not a lot of buttons to talk about other than the AC knobs here on the center console, as well as some on the steering wheel and around the steering wheel. The center screen is amazing in that it actually exists in a car this cheap. It also has Bluetooth audio and hands-free calling, not to mention a backup camera. The seats themselves are mm, very, very thin and not very supportive, but the faux leather, pretty soft. This being a two row pickup, we have to try out the back seat. Okay, space is fine, acceptable, but this seating position can best be described as turgid. There's also zero adjustment whatsoever. The seats too are even thinner and even less supportive than the ones up front. I am surprised and pleased, however, to see headrests. In the summation, I wouldn't want to spend more than five minutes back here. Where I do want to be, however, is in the driver's seat, because I want to find out what it's like behind the wheel of this potential dream truck. Underneath the hood of the Wuling Fighting is a naturally aspirated 1.5 liter four cylinder making 74 kilowatts and 140 newton meters of torque. That's backed by a five speed manual transmission that puts power down through the rear wheels only. The Wuling Fighting, much like the Wuling Hongguang MPV on which it is based, is exceedingly easy to drive. I'm not one of those people that thinks that putting a manual transmission in an otherwise boring car will make it, you know, fun or exciting, but it's an undeniable that this five-speed manual makes this a much more engaging vehicle to drive. Now, it's also very, very hard, nearly impossible to stall because most of the torque comes in at very low in the rev range. The manual transmission also allows you to wring every last bit of power out of the little four banger up front and you kind of need it. This thing weighs less than 3000 pounds or about 1300 some kilos, but with only 74 kilowatts, it's definitely not fast. It's enough to keep up with traffic, but if you loaded it with cargo and people, I imagine it would be monumentally slow. Inside of the cabin, well, NVH isn't great. Uh, I do have some some complaints in that front. I'm not sure if the mic is going to pick it up, but there are a lot there are a lot of squeaks, a lot of squeaks. Uh, there is a squeak from the air conditioner. There is squeak from the hard plastic interior, and there is a very loud squeak from the rear. I believe it is probably from the black roll hoop that I mentioned earlier. Um, I should also mention that this car has driven, as of right now, 1,150 kilometers, or about 700 some miles. It's brand new. Suspension is McPherson struts up front and leaf springs in the rear, which, while simple and I'm sure quite reliable, doesn't make for the best ride. The leaf springs, well, much like a lot of pickup trucks that have leaf springs, every time you go over a big bump, bump the rear kind of turns into a pogo stick. It's not a great feeling. The steering wheel is made of a material that is somewhere on the level of a dog toy, but hopefully that will make it very durable. Um, the feeling you get through the steering wheel is, well, there's not a lot of it other than the vibration from the engine. Overall though, with all of these complaints that I have, it's still $10,000. This thing's only supposed to be good at two things, being cheap, and hauling things around. And in that respect, it gets a thumbs up from me. Something I haven't mentioned up to this point is that I am a former small truck owner myself. My first vehicle was a 1998 Mazda B2500, aka the Dragon Wagon, and I drove it all throughout high school and university. 
It was the perfect size for hauling everything from furniture to fertilizer, and we almost always chose it over my dad's F-150 King Ranch when it came time to do any real work. I poked fun at the full-size truck haters at the beginning of this video, but I honestly think they have a point. I too believe that modern pickup trucks are way bigger, way more capable, and hence way more expensive than they really need to be. In that sense, the cheap, simple Wu Ling is a perfect antidote to those road-going behemoths. The only problem is, it's only sold here in China. So the lesson to our viewers outside of China is, go buy a used Mazda pickup truck, I guess. Well, thank you for watching. Be sure to like, subscribe, and hit the bell.